Are you tired of feeling like you're constantly juggling a thousand things, struggling to stay focused, and always wondering where your day went? Well, it's time to take control again of your productivity and reclaim your time. In this video, we'll be going over six essential habits that will help unlock your potential as it allows you to get more done without needing any additional effort. My name is Gio and you. If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. I thought really hard about this list because I want to ensure that they were powerful, of course, but also at the same time, easy enough for you guys to apply immediately so that after watching this video, you can learn about the importance of these habits and then get to practicing them right away. If you enjoy the video, please remember to smash the thumbs up. Also leave your comments if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them and of course subscribe. With that being said, sit back, relax and enjoy the video. Habit number one, learn to say no. Most people don't understand how important boundaries are. You see, because behind every no is a deeper yes to you, to what you want to be, to what you want to do. If you're constantly just following the lead of other people without ever putting yourself first, you're going to find yourself wasting a lot of your time. I used to be the biggest people pleaser. I used to care so much about what other people thought about me. Anytime that they wanted me to be somewhere to do something, I would immediately say yes. And there'd be so many moments in which I would come back home, we would have a long night, and I would think to myself, I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I went out with them. I didn't wanna be doing that. I felt like I just wasted all that time. And I started to really sacrifice everything that I wanted to do. By the time I started to wake up to this reality, a few years had gone by, and I realized that I wasn't making progress in any of the areas that I really wanted to make progress on, because I thought that if I said no and was to do my own thing, that I would be left alone that I would be an outcast, that I would be made fun of, and people wouldn't like that, right? But I've learned that it's so much more fulfilling to be alone doing the things that are important to you, that are valued to you, that are aligning with your beliefs, than it is to be surrounded by a hundred people that don't actually care about you, that don't actually care what it is that you want to do, that don't necessarily make you feel like you're in the right space, right? And so if it's not something that is true to you, right? And it's something that you know it doesn't go along with who you are and what you value. It's okay to say no. Actually, in fact, it's necessary for you to say no. And I promise you that if you had separated yourself and you spent some time alone in that space and with that increased bandwidth, pursue the things that are of value to you and you get really good at them and you really fall in love with that, you will develop the skills necessary and then eventually attract people that have the same type of passion and interests and hobbies that you're going to be able to formulate a group and a community that you don't find yourself saying no as much, right? That doesn't happen though unless you can start creating those boundaries. So learn how to say no. Habit number two, set micro goals. You see, too many times we're obsessed with these massive leaps of progress. So for example, perhaps you are getting into the gym for the first time and you set the goal of, I want to gain 20 pounds of muscle. That is a very difficult feat to achieve, okay? to say the very least. That takes a ton of discipline, a ton of consistency, a ton of knowledge, and a ton of time. And very likely, you will fail at that horribly, right? You're gonna be three weeks in, four weeks in, thinking to yourself, I've done this for this period of time. I put in a lot of effort because going to the gym three or four times consistently after having never gone before, that's a humongous step in the right direction, but you're gonna be equating that to having the results of 20 pounds of lean muscle that should be put onto you and you're gonna be frustrated and eventually you're going to give up because you're not achieving your goals, right? But this does a very dangerous thing to you, which is a negative feedback loop in the sense where when you fail to achieve this, you you immediately are going to jump to something being wrong with you. You're going to think that you're lacking something and that's what's causing you to not be able to follow through with any of your goals. And so then the next time you try and set yourself a goal, you start to have a little bit of a lack of confidence, right? You're like, oh my goodness, I failed in my previous fitness journey. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to achieve this next one. And then you might fail with that too because you still are, are obsessed with these massive leaps. So you might be thinking, you know what? I'm gonna pick up running and I'm gonna run a marathon in in six months time and you've never run before you're probably gonna fail at that too so then afterwards you're gonna be like man I can't do running I can't do weight training 
fitness is just not for me. I, I see that happen so many times when in reality, you set yourself up to fail. What you should have done is say, okay, you know what? Trying to build 20 pounds of lean muscle, I don't even know how to do that. I don't even know where to start. Maybe that's not something I can control. What I can control is how often I go to the gym. Maybe I'll tell myself that I'm gonna go to the gym three times a week. I can control that. But actually that still seems a little bit hard, right? I've never gone to the gym before. Going three times a week is maybe not something that I can necessarily do so easily. I'm gonna set myself to go to the gym one time a week. And maybe now it's laughable, it's feasible. You're like, oh my goodness, I just went from trying to gain 20 pounds of lean muscles to go to the gym one time a week. Oh man, that sounds like I'm taking baby steps. I don't want to do that, but you need to do that, right? Because going to the gym once a week when you haven't gone before, that's still progress, right? It's progress in the right direction because you have to, one, sign up for a gym membership. Two, you have to plan out time in your day to go to the gym. You have to get in your car. You have to go there. You have to get in a good workout. You have to come back and you have to have a post meal. And if you haven't done that before and you haven't actually learned how to properly balance that with everything else you got going in your life, that's a pretty big feet that you got for yourself there, right? But that's a lot more achievable than trying to gain 20 pounds of lean muscle. And it's very likely that you'll achieve that more micro goal. And as you accomplish that, you can set more nuanced and more difficult goals for yourself as you progressively get more advanced. But that type of mindset, when you can take a goal, like you can get an assignment or you can get some sort of job or you can get a project and you're able to break it down into these micro goals and thinks, what is the actual first step that I need to take? That is a powerful, powerful thing to be able to do because it's so much more likely you'll achieve that. And then it's going to do two things for you, two very, very, very powerful things for you. Number one, it's going to build positive momentum. Number two, it's going to build confidence because you were actually able to follow through with what you committed to. So as you're starting to tackle on these subsequent goals of yours, you have the confidence to take on larger and larger ones and you're setting yourself up for success. This is the way to approach it instead of trying to only be obsessed with these macro goals. But you have to be so keen on this because everything in marketing, everything that people try to present to you are going to be in the shape of a macro goal because it's so much more attractive. It's so much more appealing. It's so much more easier to sell to you. Oh, you're going to have all this success. And it's up to you to be able to take all this information and not get overwhelmed by it, but be able to break it down and be able to achieve them one by one. So that's another habit. Whenever you get something presented to you, immediately break it down to micro goals so that you actually have the chance of succeeding. You do that in the long run, you're going to find yourself having more success than you ever thought was possible. Habit number three, set your items out the night before. When I say that, the first thing that probably pops up in your head is setting your clothes out so that you don't have to waste time making the decision about what you're going to wear. I think that's a great place to first start. I've been doing that for years now and it's really beneficial. So if you haven't tried that before, what are you doing? You should probably try that. But that idea of setting your items out the night before applies to way, way more than just your clothes. For example, if I know that I'm going to have a deep work session an hour after I wake up, think about how beneficial it'll be for me if I had already had the tab open for my document, also the assignment, and then I had my iPad all charged and ready to go. And all I had to do in the morning was turn on my monitors, turn on my iPad and get ready to work. Versus if I had to turn on my monitors, I still had tabs open from the night before and then I might get distracted on maybe an Amazon purchase that I was working on the night before. And then I think to myself, wait, what assignment was I supposed to work on? And then 20 minutes into work, I get that 10% notification on my iPad and then I have to get up and get a charger. Think about how much additional friction I'm giving myself and forcing myself to try and overcome when it's so unnecessary. Because if I just spent two to three minutes the night before already having done the work to just set myself up, then I'll have a lot more success and it'll be much more likely that I'll be able to execute that work about the way that I wanted and intended to do. And so if you compare the amount of time that it takes the night before and the amount of time that you're going to save by being more productive the next day, they're not even close. So spend the additional time the night before. But I have another example that doesn't necessarily just have to do with work, but I had recently gotten a new camera. 
right? And I've never had a camera before. I've always recorded videos on my phone. And a camera is very scary to me. There's so many more buttons and I feel like I'm going to break it and it was expensive. I know that I have to learn how to use it, but that wasn't necessarily number one on my priority list. So I actually had my camera and kept it on my shelf for two weeks before ever opening it up because the idea was so overwhelming to me. But what I did was I took the camera out of the box and put it on my kitchen counter. Why? Because I go to my kitchen counter all the time, right? I'm in there first thing in the morning. I used it for whenever I eat my meals and I'm constantly passing it when I walk out of the house. So that camera now is in my line of focus, right? And I actually found myself while I was eating, just playing around with the camera, right? Or when I was going to get some water to play around with the camera. And I found myself when I would play around with the camera that I would do it for like 10, 15, 20 minutes. And after a span about two and a half weeks, I got a lot more familiar with the camera because I had to position the camera so that I could have success in terms of actually getting to it, actually making progress on it. And so setting your items out the night before or just setting your items in places and locations that you know that you will go across a lot more, that will do a lot for you in terms of your productivity. It'll do a lot for you in terms of actually making progress on it. So give that a shot. Habit number four, no social media before 10 a.m. This is a rule that I set out for myself several months back, and since then it's provided me with a ton of benefits. I really do think you should try it out for yourself too. You see, when I first woke up, I would scroll on my phone, I'll admit to it. It was a really, really bad habit of mine, and I'm a big sports fan, so the first thing that I'll jump to is sports news, sports score, sports highlights, and then once I was caught up with that, then I'd find myself distracted with other content. And then I would consume that for another 30 minutes while I doom scroll until then I try and get up. But there were a lot of negative ramifications that was happening here. And a big one is that I would feel very lethargic afterwards. And a lot of times I would be so tired to the point in which I would go back to sleep. Why? Well, when we first wake up more often than not, you're not going to have a big jolt of energy immediately, right? You're going to feel tired. But that's why it's so important that you get into habit of immediately taking steps, whether it's getting a drink of water, whether it's opening up your blinds and getting sunlight in, whether it's going outside and getting sunlight in, you should be taking those steps to wake yourself up so you can get the day started. But scrolling on your phone is not a great way to get that increase of energy. Instead, it actually continues to decrease your energy because you're not even actively engaging your brain while you're consuming that content. So you'll find yourself more tired and that of course isn't gonna do great things for your productivity because you're probably gonna sleep in or you'll not be able to get your work done in the time that you need to get it done. And another big ramp ramification, right, is that you become unfocused. Now what's at the center of your mind? It's all the content that you consumed. Maybe you, you came across some horrible, tragic news and now that's in your mind, right? Or perhaps your favorite artist came out with new music and now that's on your mind. Or perhaps you watched a really funny video and now that's on your mind. Whatever it may be, that has become the center of focus and it's really hard to get towards the first task of your day, right? And it does a lot of adding that friction so it makes it just harder for you to make progress. And so if you can make a rule for yourself where you don't do any social media before 10 a.m. and you get a lot of the hard things out of the way in the mornings, you're not gonna feel as guilty if you do tend to go on your phone. But I found for myself that I'm not even as tempted to go on my phone if I set that rule and I stick to it, right? And if I've built this momentum throughout the mornings of getting this progress done, but when it's 10 a.m., I'm not necessarily thinking about my phone. I'm thinking about, okay, what else can I do, right? What else can I do with my phone? day. And so that rule, it's so much more realistic to set that than say, oh, I'm not going to go on social media at all today, right? If you're somebody that uses social media a lot, it's not very likely that you're going to be able to achieve that macro goal. So setting that rule of just 10 a.m., you can get all the stuff that you need to get done before it. You'll find that when you build the momentum, you're not even as tempted to go on it. But even if you do go on your phone later on in the day, so what? You, you had probably gotten a lot done already so far. So it's a great rule that I think that you should take on for yourself. And now it's become a true habit of mine. I don't ever get tempted now to even use my phone. I, I go ahead and start my day and my phone's not even in my reach. And I think it's important that you start to see the benefits of that too. And so if you can apply it, I would totally, totally recommend you do that. Habit number five, take breaks. I used to be somebody that thought the longer hours I worked, the more productive I was being. And I can't believe I used to do this, but I would train myself to work such extensive hours at a time without any breaks to the 
point that it got very unhealthy. I got up to nine hours at one point. And don't get me wrong, I got a lot of work done within those nine hours, but after three days of that schedule, I was not feeling all that great. I was feeling burnt out, feeling completely depleted, and definitely not wanting to do that again. So it wasn't a sustainable approach. And if we were to take an honest look at what was happening within those nine hours, we would realize that it wasn't a good approach, right? The first 90 minutes, great. Good energy, good focus. I was able to produce quality work efficiently. But after those first 90 minutes were up, my effectiveness decreased very rapidly. It wasn't even a linear function. It's an exponential decay function. So what used to take me an hour now was taking me three or four hours. And so I was much better off finding that sweet spot in terms of what I can do to focus and still produce quality work. For me, it was about 90 minutes and then inserting a break there, right? So that I could recoup to close to 100% in terms of my effectiveness and then be able to bring all my energy and my focus to the second bout of work then insert another break then do a third bout of work. And then I would be getting just as much work done or a lot of times more work done in a lot less time. And so take breaks, okay? Don't feel guilty about taking them. They're not for people that can't handle high stress or can't handle a large workload. No, we all need breaks, not even just for the health component, but literally for your productivity. It's such an essential habit for you to adopt. So if you were like my old self, then change that. And starting today, we're going to start inputting breaks for yourself. It can literally be you just spending five minutes away and doing whatever, or you can creatively input those breaks. So maybe Maybe you get one bout of work done and then you scheduled it so that you have breakfast right after that first bout of work. And after your breakfast is over, you get into your second bout of work and then perhaps you go and wash up Then you have your third bout of work, then you go to the gym and then perhaps you come back and do a fourth bout of work. So inputting those breaks with things that you still need to get done in your day, but it's a completely different task that doesn't take as much energy or focus is also a great approach. So please adopt that habit. Number six, daily reflections. And this one may not seem so intuitive in terms how it can lead to being more productive or more focused. And perhaps you're thinking, man, that 10 minutes or that 15 minutes that I would take to journal would be much better off just doing work. And I would heavily disagree, right? Because getting a lot of work done is great. But if that work doesn't lead you towards a goal of yours or doesn't lead you towards where you want to be headed in general, then that could be technically considered a waste of time too, right? It's not enough to just get work done. It's important to match that with where you want to be headed. And if you're not doing these daily reflections to consider exactly that, right, where you are and how you can actually take steps to get to where you want to be, then you might find yourself being really distracted on things that aren't necessarily important to you. There have been a lot of times where I've worked really hard on a project and I would find myself after even a month or two doing these reflections and finding myself over a long span of time not being fulfilled with that project and thinking to myself, maybe this isn't what I need to be doing right now, right? Maybe this is better off delegated to someone else so that I can work on other things or perhaps this just altogether goes on the back burner because I'm not finding fulfillment in it. Maybe this isn't actually what I wanted to be doing. I learned a lot throughout this process. Maybe I can apply it to some of these other aspects that I wanted to be actually pursuing. So these reflections are such a great way for you to really set your intentions because being focused and being productive in the direction that you want to be headed matters a lot. And so if you're not doing your journalings already, please start doing that. So that would be habit number six. With that being said, those were all the six habits that I want to speak about in this video. I think that if I was to have learned about these six habits a lot earlier, I would have had a lot more success and a lot quicker at that, right? And so hopefully you're able to take these habits and apply it in your life. And hopefully these are things that you can already see the value of, but I bet that that will even become more obvious when you start applying it and reaping the benefits yourself. And so if you learned anything, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to speak with you guys. And of course, give a thumbs up and subscribe. And until next time, please take care and I'll see you guys all at the top.